today we're going to be removing the radiator from a 2017 Grizzly 700. This also works for our 2016s and 2018s. Um, mine looks a little different on the front because uh, I have a custom front bumper which I already have removed. Most people are just going to have the black plastic pieces that go to the corner of your fenders that you're going to have to remove to get to the step that I'm at. For this job you're going to need pliers, side cutters, flat top screwdriver, quarter extender, 3-8 extender, 3-8 drive ratchet, quarter drive ratchet, number 4 allen key, a 14mm wrench, an 11mm wrench, hammer, and a 10, 8, 12, and 14mm sockets. I'm going to start by taking your 12mm socket on 3-8 drive and remove the two front 12mm bolts. Next. We have two more 12 millimeter bolts under the fender, just down here. Right here. There's one like this on each side. Go ahead and remove those. After you have those two 12 millimeter bolts on each side removed, you have a 10 millimeter bolt that connects the fender to the rack, also on both sides. So we'll go ahead and remove those. Once you have that unbolted, go ahead and remove the front trunk plastic. Then you can go ahead and pull your rack straight off. Once you have the front rack hauled off, you can now take your 12mm socket and remove the two front rack supports. Get those out of the way. Just pull up through. With those unbolted, now take your flat top screwdriver and you have two push pins on each side of this plastic. Let's go ahead and pop those out. Then you can just unclip the front plastic. The back can pull forward and these pieces just pop out frontwards. Next we're going to remove the headlights from the front plastic housing. Um, we have an 8mm bolt on the bottom and an 8mm bolt on the top. And then the whole headlight assembly just comes in and you can just let it hang there. Next we're going to remove the uh, front bumper support. Start by taking the two 10mm bolts that are on the top by the headlights. On each side. Next, you want to remove your front skid plate bolts. I already had this step done, but they just bolt up through and go to here. I have a custom skid plate, so mine's a little different than what you're going to see on yours. After you have that step complete, you're going to take your 14 millimeter wrench and you're going to remove the two 14 millimeter bolts that are on either side of your winch. Once you have the front skid plate removed and those two 14 millimeter bolts, you can go ahead and take your 12 millimeter socket and remove the bolts that are on the bottom of that bumper support and the ones that are about midway up. These are the same on both sides. Once you have those bolts out, you can go ahead and pull this front bumper support out. It's a little finicky to get off. Next step is going to be to take a 10 millimeter socket and remove two bolts that you have up to keep it in the black plastic to the corner of your fender, which is up and under here. And we have one on the other side as well. Once you have those removed, you can go ahead Take your flat top screwdriver and your number four Allen key. I'm going to start by removing the number four Allen keys that bolts that are on each side. Then take your flat top screwdriver and you have a 
two push pins, one in here and one in here, keeping this front plastic on to the rest of the bike. So you go ahead and pop those out. Then that black plastic piece should be all good to take out. Let's go ahead and pull it out of there. Once you have those two push pins removed, you can now take a 10 millimeter socket and an extension and go to the bottom of the black plastic piece and you're gonna see two 10 millimeter bolts. I only have one in there right now, but it's gonna be right in here. And there's gonna be one on the other side, the same thing. Take your extension and your ratchet, get in there and you can just remove those. Once you have those two 10 millimeter bolts removed from the bottom, you can go ahead and pull that front plastic right off. At this step, it's where it's better to have a buddy. Um, Off-road Dan gave me a hand the first time to remove my radiator. I already had my system drained and uh, my hoses are disconnected, but I'm gonna show you guys where they connect and uh, you're just gonna take your pliers, because these clamps are very hard to remove with your fingers. So you're gonna take your pair of pliers, and you're gonna squeeze your clamps together, like so. And they're gonna be up here. Just slide them back. Your hose is gonna be connected to this post right here. So this hose goes there. This piece of paper towel I have just so nothing goes in my system. Also, your overflow hose is gonna be this one right here. That goes up to the top. You can reach down from right here and disconnect that one. Same thing, small clip. Just squeeze that one with your fingers and pull the hose right off. Now over on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take your pliers. I already have mine removed, but you're gonna slide the hose clamp back a bit and just pop your hose right off of that post that's on the radiator. These things might be a little sticky. I had to wiggle mine left and right a bit to just slide it around on the post before it popped off. When you remove those hoses, you're gonna get antifreeze come out. It made a little mess on the floor, but uh, as long as you can't clean up. Um, some rags in around this area might help collect the uh, antifreeze so it doesn't go dripping on the floor. Just be cautious of it. So when you have that done, you're ready to go ahead and pull your rat out. You're going to start by removing the two 10 millimeter bolts that are at the bottom. It's that bolt and the rad to the frame. After you have those unbolted, your radiator also goes over two hooks. There's two holes in the radiator that push over these two posts. So you're gonna go ahead and just pop that off those two posts. At this step right now, you guys will still have your hoses connected to the back. You're gonna have a hose on the left, a hose on the right, an overflow hose that goes to where the cap is, and you're gonna have a clear hose that connects to the fan. You're gonna to wanna to just slide the radiator forward as much as possible after it's on hold. I now have the radiator out, as I said, uh, before you guys pull yours off, you're gonna have a plug that operates your fan, and you're gonna have one last hose that's connected to the fan, which you had to remove before you can get the radiator out. This plug just goes up through the bike, up through the plastics, and connects right on the side of your fender right here to this one. It's just a simple small flat top screwdriver. You pop the plug, pull it right out. Once you have that radiator removed, you can go ahead and pop the fan off if you have to. It's just four 10 millimeter bolts, top and bottom, there's two each. You can haul that fan right off and uh, you can blow with the radiator. That's what I had to remove mine for to clean it. It was full of mud. Um, you just take an air hose and blow the mud through. Make sure to blow from the back to the front not from the front to the back. I also had to adjust a few fins because I had them bend up. Um, just a small flat top screwdriver and just carefully, gently ply them back. It'll help you get better airflow. Um, I also sprayed them, sprayed my radiator with a product called uh, WD-40 machine and engine degreaser. It's a foaming spray. It seemed to work really well. Um, I sprayed it on both through the front and through the back. It foams up and you can watch the dirt lifting from the radiator.
Then after I had that done and sprayed it, I went over it with Super Clean. Um, Super Clean pretty much removes the dirt from anything you want. It's been by far the best product that I've seen uh, for cleaning a bike or anything really. Um, I'll always use Super Clean. But um, yeah, so I have mine cleaned and ready to go and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it helps. 